Hey everybody. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the Eclipse IDE for Java development. Now for this, we need Java and Eclipse installed on the system. If we don't have them both, I will leave link in the descriptions to download and install Java and Eclipse on the Mac operating system. Now, if you're done with that, if we have Java and Eclipse installed, let's go right ahead and see how we can develop Java programs and also how we can work with the Eclipse IDE. Now, let me open search and type in Eclipse. Now, the first thing that we notice is Eclipse is asking us to select a directory as a workspace. Now, workspace, as the name suggests, is a directory where we can save all our projects. Now we can have multiple workspaces and if you don't want to use the default workspace, just go ahead and click on browse, select any directory on the system and you can use that as your workspace for all your Java projects. Now we'll not make any changes here. I will use the default workspace and I'll go ahead and click on launch. Now the first screen that you see here is called the Eclipse Workbench. As you can notice, it comes with a lot of default windows. You have the Package Explorer, Problems, Java Docs, Console, etc. You also have the Java file open here and you see a lot of other windows here. Now we can modify the Workbench any way we like. If you don't want to see any window, we can just go ahead and close it. We can also relocate windows. All you got to do is hold, drag and drop. As you can see that the Java doc window has moved to the top. We can put it back wherever we want it. I can put it back where it was earlier. So there are a lot of options these ways. You can also move a window out of the editor as well. So I can just hold on this window and drag it out of the Eclipse workbench. And you can notice that it is on a separate window now. We can also add new windows to the workbench. All you got to do is click on windows and go to show view and add any window you want. We removed problems. We can go ahead and add them back. There you go. So you can modify the workbench any way you want. You can drag and drop these windows out of now. You can modify the workbench any way you want. If you don't want to see any particular window, you can just close it. If you want to add new windows, you can just go to windows and go to show view and add anything you want. Also, you can create something called a perspective. Now, perspective is a combination of all these windows. Now, if you look, let me maximize the Eclipse workbench. Now, what you're looking at here is called a perspective. Now, perspective is a combination of the windows in the workbench. Now, as you can see here at the right corner, you will see the Java perspective here. Now you can reset the perspective if you made changes to the windows. Now I'll show you how that can be done. Now, if I had removed problems and let's say declaration from my workbench and you wanted to reset the perspective, all you got to do is come to the Java perspective, right click on it and click on reset. It's asking you if you want to reset the perspective, I'll click on yes reset perspective and you'll notice that the previously closed windows are back on the workbench. Now we can add multiple perspectives on the right corner. We can see that there is a Java perspective and a debug perspective to add another perspective. All we got to do is come to windows perspective, open perspective and click on any perspective you want. I click on JavaScript. And you'll notice that a new perspective has been added and it says JavaScript. Now you can see here that a new perspective is added. Now you can change between these perspectives anytime you want. Now let me change to the debug perspective. As you can see here, the windows in this workbench now is different to the Java perspective. So this way, guys, you can work with different perspectives and you can also modify what windows you want to see on the workbench. Now, let me go back to the Java perspective. Now, let's look at how we can create a new project. Now, for this, click on File, New, and select Java project. Now, on the screen, we need to type in a project name. I'll type in Hello 
YouTube. Now you see a lot of other options here. JRE is the Java runtime environment. It is a tool that is required to run any Java program. Now, when you install JDK, JRE is part of it, so you don't have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and click on Next. Now here, we can keep everything as default. You'll notice that there is a new folder called Source, and all our project work will go inside this directory. Now let's click on Finish. Now it's asking us to create a module info.java file. Now we don't have to do this right now. We'll learn about it in a later video. I click on don't create. Well, now we can see the new project being created here. Now let me open this. You can see that there is the source directory here. Now let's look at this project in our workspace. I'll open finder and let me go to users, home. And Eclipse workspace. Now if you remember this was the directory of our workspace and as you can see here we have multiple projects. Now you have hello world which is a previous project and we have hello YouTube which is the product we just created and if we open here we see the source directory and every Java class or every Java program that we create will be inside the source directory. Now let's close the workspace and get back to the workbench. Now that we have the project created, let's create our very first Java file. Now to do this, right click on the project and click on new and select Java class. Here I will give the same title. Hello YouTube. Now before you can create the file, you'll also notice there are a lot of options here called modifiers. We'll look at modifiers in a later video. Let's keep every other setting as default and click on finish. Now as you can see here, the new Java file is created and this file, as I said before, will be inside the source directory of the workspace. We can open the workspace and go to hello youtube project and go to source file and you can see that the java file is inside the source directory now another thing that we can notice here is that our java program is inside a default package now packages are nothing but a group of java classes or java programs now we can give them custom names based on functionalities or the project in itself these help us in better identifying the various java programs in our project now because we did not create a new java package eclipse is putting the java program in a default package now let us write a basic program to see what are the other functionalities within the eclipse ide now the first thing we can do is write a basic comment. We'll learn more about comments in a later video. Let's type in first Java program. We'll write some basic code. Public, public static void main string. Args and let's print something out system dot out dot print line hello YouTube. Now this is a very basic program. Let me go ahead and save it. File save now once you have a basic java program we can run the java program now to run a java program we can click on this green button here and you'll notice that the java program has run and you see the output here at the console saying hello youtube you can also run the java program by right clicking on the file and clicking on run as and selecting java application You'll notice that the program is run and you'll see the result as Hello YouTube. Now there are a lot of ways Eclipse helps the developer while developing the Java program. Now one, one such thing is called the Content Assist. Now as you can see here, as I type in certain commands, 
Eclipse will start to give suggestions here. So if I want to type in now, if I, now if I want to print a statement, as you saw, we printed hello YouTube. If you start typing in, there is an autocomplete function. You can notice that the out, the out method is ready. Now I can click on that, double click on it. It gets automatically selected. And similarly, print line can also be selected by just double clicking on it. Now also when you hover on these individual elements, you will get an idea of what they do. For example, if I hover on system, it says that it is a Java system class and you can go through the description. Now, now a lot of these settings can be changed in the preferences. Now let me go to Eclipse preferences, click on Eclipse and go to preferences. Now here you'll see a lot of options. Now let's focus on the Java options. Let's open Java and let's go to the editor and you can see content assist here. Now let me click on content assist open content assist and click on advanced and you can see here that there are a lot of options here you can select any one of them now this will help us in the autocomplete functionalities you can add or remove any of these autocompletes and click on apply changes also under preferences you'll see a lot of other options you will see install jres now if we come to install jres you see that a default jre is selected now we can have multiple java versions running on our system and if we have that when we run a project we can come to preferences and select which version of java we want to run for that particular java project there are a lot of other options here we can look at this when we go into details of how the eclipse editor works let me cancel this now there are a lot of other settings we can change in the system preferences now, a couple of things that we need to notice here is that every Java class has to start with an uppercase. You can see here that the Hello YouTube is starting with an uppercase. Another thing that we can notice here is that the Java file and the Java class have the same name. Now, when we have a Java program with a public class, now we learn more about these access modifiers in later videos, but understand that anytime we have a Java program which has a class, with the access modifier is public then we need to have then we need to have the java file name and the class name identical so now we know how to create a project and create a very basic java file and also run the program we can also close projects now to do that all we got to do is right click on a project let me close the hello world project right click on the project and just come to delete now, when you do this, it gives you the option to delete the project content from the disk. Do not select this. If you do this, the project would be removed from our system. Let's not select this and just click on OK. And you'll notice that the project is removed from the editor. Now, the Eclipse ID also makes it easy for us to debug a code. Now, let me show you how we can debug our simple Java program. Let me put a couple of dies. And now to start the debug, click on this debug arrow here and select debug as and click on Java application. Now, now Eclipse is telling us that we can change the perspective if we want to. Remember we spoke about different perspectives and debug is also another default perspective. Now let's click on switch. Now you'll notice that immediately we are on another perspective. You can see that at the top right corner here, we are on the debug perspective. And here you can see that the program is under the debug process. And that the program is currently stopped at line number six. Now to move through these lines, all we got to do is click on this button here. And you'll immediately see that line six is executed. And at the bottom, you can see hello world output. To the right, you will see the variable screen where you can see the name and the value of each and every argument and the methods. Now we can run through the next line as well. You'll see the next output, hello. And we can finish the debug process. Now this way, guys, Eclipse allows us to debug the program very easily. Well, that's it, you guys. We've gone through the basic functionality of the Eclipse editor. We've also taken a look at how we can create a simple project, a simple Java program, and run it and even debug the same using the Eclipse IDE. 
Now we will look at how the Java program works and what public static void main and various other methods and classes do inside a Java program in some later videos. I hope you enjoyed the video and do like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.